Hello everyone and welcome once again to the second of our online Advent devotional series and the theme for this week is about pray. We think about ways in which we can take more time during this season to communicate to our God through prayer as we wait for Christ. Zechariah, who went to the temple to pray, serves as an example for us of how hard that waiting in prayer can be. The theme verse for us is, But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me. Let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your providence you sent John the Baptist to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the hearts of children to their parents to make ready a people prepared for the coming of our Savior through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 through 17. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading now from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 25. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abiha, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now while he was serving as priest before God when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, 
Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. For he will be great before the Lord. And he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until that day these things take place, because you didn't believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among the people. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the babe of Bethlehem. Amen. In the first year of their marriage, when his wife became sick with a fever, her husband insisted, I'm taking you to the hospital for a complete checkup. In the second year of their marriage, when his wife got sick again, the husband announced, I've called the doctor and he's going to rush right over. In the third year of their marriage, when his wife got sick again, her husband said, I'll make you something to eat. Do we have any soup? Family life. It can be the best of times and it can be the worst of times. Luke chapter 1 verse 5 introduces two families. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah. Luke doesn't intend for this phrase to be a vague chronological marker. Instead, he contrasts Herod's thirst for power and dominance with the stain and stigma related with Zechariah and Elizabeth's lack of children. This reflection has two parts. In the first part, Herod's family will be front and center. In the second part, we will shine the light on Zechariah and Elizabeth. Yes, this Herod is Herod the Great. And yes, again, this is the same Herod who, when Jesus was born, ordered the execution of all the boys under the age of two in and around Bethlehem. To say that Herod was a monster is putting it mildly. Born into a politically well-connected family in 73 BC, Herod was destined for a life of political hardball. He married 10 times and ordered the execution of two of his wives and three of his sons. When a political opponent poisoned Herod's father, seething with revenge, Herod formed an ingenious plan. He invited his father's killers over for a dinner party. As they arrived, Yes, you guessed it, he had them all murdered. At the age of 69 and knowing he was dying, Herod came to realize that no one would mourn his death. He longed for tears to flow at his funeral. So Herod devised one final desperate plan. He would bring together the top leaders of the land for a meeting at Jericho, and once they arrived, he would have the gates of his fortress locked. Just before the moment of his death, he would have all the leaders massacred. One way or another, people would cry when Herod died. In the late 1800s, two paddle boats on the Mississippi River left Memphis, Tennessee on a race to New Orleans. 
As his boat fell behind, an enterprising captain took some of the ship's cargo and began throwing it into the ovens. When his sailors saw that the supplies burned just like coal, they threw more and more of it in. Well, that boat ended up winning the race, but in the process, the captain and sailors had burned all of their cargo. That is a tragic picture of Herod's family as well. To win the race, eliminate every rival and be top dog, Herod burned all his cargo. Herod destroyed his family. Thank God I can hear us all say, I'm not like Herod. I never raise an angry hand against a child. I pay my taxes and every now and then I slip a little money into the offering plate. Once at a nursing home, I even played bingo with my grandmother. But if we're honest with ourselves, we sometimes see a little Herod staring back at us in the mirror. A part of us would rather rule than serve, dominate than rather submit, and get ahead and win at the expense of people in our family or friends. We've all used words to slice and dice our spouses, our family, our friends, even our enemies. We've all made selfish decisions that have hurt others and ignored clear warnings from God's word. And the result? Though family and personal life can be the best of times, too often they can be the worst of times. So much for highlighting Herod's family. Let's now zero in on Zechariah's family and how God teaches him to wait. They had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well along in years. In Luke chapter 1, Elizabeth describes this barrenness as a disgrace among the people. In those days, if you had children, you had everything. Conversely, if you had no children, you had nothing. Zechariah and Elizabeth longed for a child. Now it appeared too late. They were both too old. It seemed as though that ship had sailed and that train had left the station. They were both well along in years. They had been waiting for what must have seemed like an eternity. Maybe you're like Zechariah and Elizabeth, waiting for children but not able to conceive. Or maybe you're single, desperately waiting to be married, but it just hasn't happened yet. Maybe you've been married for decades and you're waiting for that sparkle to shine in return. Like Zechariah and Elizabeth, we can all feel hopeless and helpless when it comes to waiting. End of story? No way. God intervened. He gave Elizabeth and Zechariah gifts, the same gifts he gives to our families. What are they? God's promises never end. Israel's three matriarchs, Sarah, Rebekah, and Rachel, were all barren at one time. So was Hannah, the mother of Samuel. All four women eventually had children. Elizabeth and Zechariah must have believed that if God did it not once, but four times, God can do it again. Has family life or your personal life left you waiting and empty? Then hear this. If God was faithful to Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Hannah, he will be faithful to you. God loves you. God's promises for you in Jesus Christ never, ever end. You may have given up on you, but God will never give up on you. He replaces barrenness and brokenness with goodness and grace. God's presence never disappoints. He, Zechariah, was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. The honor attached to the incense offering is marked by its location. The incense altar is in the holy place, outranked in terms of holiness only by the holy of holies. Zechariah is as close to the presence of God as any person other than the high priest would ever get. The only other time in Luke's gospel that someone has this kind of access to God's presence in the temple is in Luke chapter 23, verse 45, where it says the curtain of the temple was torn in two. 
In Luke chapter 1, Zechariah has access to God's presence. In Luke chapter 23, because of Christ's death, we all have access to God's fuller presence, and this presence never disappoints. God's presence is most evident in the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body that suffered and was crucified, that true body is present for you. The blood that was shed, spilled and splattered, that true blood is present for you. By the blood of Jesus, you have access to the most holy presence of the most holy God. And his real presence forgives all your family and personal failures, every last one of them. And God's plan never fails. God gave Elizabeth and Zechariah a child. And God's promise is that this child, John the Baptist, will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. God's plan is to turn our hearts towards home, to replace vengeance and bitterness with forgiveness and love. He will turn the hearts of parents to their children and the hearts of the children towards their parents. One day, a mother came home from the grocery store and she looked into her living room and saw her four children sitting in a circle. As she got closer, the mother saw that her children were playing with, the, with four of the cutest little skunks you had ever seen. The mother yelled, run children, run. Well, each child grabbed a skunk and began to run. And after that, well, let's just say, things began to get really, really stinky. Family life, personal life, it can be the best of times it can be the worst of times. The next time it gets really stinky in your life, don't fly off the handle like Herod. You could lose it all. Instead, wait upon God's promises, God's presence, and God's plan. They are real, they are alive, and they work. Don't believe me? Then just ask Elizabeth and Zechariah. Amen. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forevermore. Amen.